Hello and welcome once again to the Waters and Stanton video channel. I'm glad you could join me. If you're a new visitor, then you're very welcome. And please don't forget to press the subscribe button because that will alert you when we publish new videos. Now on this channel, we bring you information about ham radio and we try and mix commercial um, sort of advertising with practical aspects of ham radio. And for those that are new to the channel, I've been around for rather a long time, which you probably notice anyway when you look at my uh, face. Uh, I've been licensed for about 60 years now, and uh, so I've seen quite a lot of ham radio. But first of all, just a, a short news item. We've just taken delivery of the LDG 49 to 1 Anun, which is an RF transformer with a ratio of 49 to 1. So what's so special about this? Well, there's two things special about it. First of all, it's very, very keenly priced. And if you take a look on our website, and I put a link at the bottom of this video, you'll see how keenly priced it is. It's a great transformer for those that want to try out an NFED half wave. And for those that are new to the channel, um, I should explain that I'm a great fan of the NFED half wave antenna. It works extremely well and it works on multiples of the uh, base frequency. So, for example, on this video, I've used uh, an antenna which is 20 meters long. And that means to say it resonates at its fundamental frequency on 40 meters, but it also works on the harmonics. It works on 20 meters, 15 and 10 meters. So it's a very effective multiband antenna and very low cost. All you need to do is to purchase uh, something like the LDG transform former, add 20 meters of wire, and you've got a multi-band antenna. Very low cost, very effective. And as I say, I'll put a link at the bottom of this video. So that's the commercial over. Now we're gonna talk about something which probably over the holiday period, because we're shooting this video just before Christmas, probably over the holiday period, you might want to try out yourself. It's a fascinating way of checking out how well your antenna is working, what propagation is like, and you can have some interesting results. You don't need anything special to, to experiment. All you need is a transceiver and an antenna. And what we're doing in this video, we're gonna look at how well your antenna is working. Maybe compare it with another antenna. If you've got two antennas, you can make a very interesting comparison. You can also check out propagation and you can also have some fascinating experiments with low power. So let's take a look. The Reverse Beacon Network is a network of radio receivers around the world and if they hear your signal they will report back together with your signal strength. So you see that the Reverse Beacon Network can be a very powerful medium for working out how well your antenna works but there is one important point. The reverse beacon network relies on Morse code, CW signals. Now, before you switch off, before you switch off, you don't need to be a CW operator to use the network. You don't even need to be able to read CW to use the reverse beacon network. So stick with it, stick with me. Now, the good thing about the reverse beacon network is it, it is very immediate. If you want to get uh, an idea of how well your antenna is working, then you get an immediate report from the reverse beacon network. Not from Joe and Bill down the road, but stations around the world. And you get reports of up to, say, 10, 15, maybe 20 stations around the world giving you a report all at once, and that network is available any time of the day or night. Now, you will realize if you watch this channel regularly that whilst I acknowledge that antenna modeling is a great program, it doesn't always give you the answers that you're looking for. You can work out what the resonant frequency of an antenna is, you can work out what the feed impedance is. 
you can see what the radiation pattern should be, but in the average garden, the average garden, the antenna that you're likely to install, whether it be vertical or horizontal, may not actually perform quite as antenna modeling suggests. And I have covered that in previous videos. Well, reverse beacon is going to tell you exactly what is happening any time of the day or night. And you will also check out propagation. Now, let me take you through the setting up of a simple ham radio station the way in which you can use the reverse beacon network, even if you don't operate CW. Here we are. Let me run you through it. I've chosen to do my test on the 20 meter ham band. So you need to tune down to the CW end. I tend to go near the top of the CW end and then change your mode to CW. Then you press the left menu button, click on Kia, click edit click edit at the top and then click the number one memory click edit again and you've got the keyboard now we're going to type in a message we're going to type test three times making sure you leave a space between each test and then after that we put de which in cw means from and then finally you put your call sign in twice When we've finished, we press enter and then come out of that program back to the main screen. Now it's important before the next stage, you make sure the power output of your transceiver is turned down to zero. Go into the power setting and reduce it to zero. Now bring up the Kia menu back on the screen and press memory one. Now you can hear the test message being sent, but of course it's not going anywhere because you've turned the power of your transceiver down to zero, but at least you can hear that it works. We've now got one more thing to do, so we need to go back into the Kia edit uh, screen again. And this time we want to select memory two, which is blank. Press the edit button and we need to insert the letters QRT. That's all, just QRT. Enter that to save it, then come out of the system again. Now we're ready to go live. We need to increase the power of our transceiver back up to the normal level. And the reason we put QRT, by the way, in there is that's going to be the end of the message, which means to say that after we've sent the test message, we are closing the station down so that nobody comes back to us. Set your frequency to a precise frequency so you can reference that frequency to a particular time when you transmit it. We've checked that the channel is clear, so now we're going to go in and start memory one. And now the transceiver is sending the test message. And I'm going to send this message three times. That's the call sign at the end of the first message. Now I'm sending it again. And now this is the third time I'm sending that message. At the end of this message, I'm going to press memory two, which will add QRT to the end to say that the station is now closing down. Now in your search engine, type in reverse beacon. That brings up this software. Type in your call sign. Add up on the display comes a display of your signal strength at various reporting stations around the world. Now if we take a closer look at the display we can see that uh, there's an American station there with a 7 dB of noise level. Another American station there, somewhat stronger, 15 dB. And what have we got? And down the bottom we've got two more American stations, 15 and 16 dB. Quite respectable signal reports. Now you can see how useful this network can be. And you can see the results that I got just on one simple transmission. And although I'm a CW operator, I didn't need to be a CW operator to achieve 
what I achieved. The good thing about the reverse beacon network is that it starts to give you information over and above what is happening at any particular point. Now, in that demonstration, I think I mentioned about making sure that you set a particular frequency for reference purposes. Well, I think I mentioned time. Time is actually logged anyway. But what I do is if I'm making comparisons with different antennas, I use one frequency for one antenna and then a different frequency for another antenna. And I know at any, any time when I look through my notes, I know that that particular frequency I was using the vertical and that particular frequency I was using a horizontal antenna. So it's well worth doing that. Now, what you can do, particularly as we start to approach the Christmas holidays, you can start to make a diary of band conditions and your aerial performance. If you do enough tests over a period of time, you'll start to get a feeling for the radiation pattern of your antenna because you'll see that certain parts of the globe, you get stronger signals than other parts. And you will also get a feel for how propagation conditions are changing during the day. And then, and then, another thing you can do is try reducing your power. Reduce your power from say 100 watts down to 10 watts. And then perhaps reduce it down to one watt. And if you still get results at one watt, which I'm sure you will do, try going down even lower if your transceiver will allow you. And then of course, if you have more than one antenna, you can switch between the two antennas and get a feel for which one is working best on what band or on what type of propagation. And you start to get a very, very good idea of how well your antenna is working. You won't get that result, that positive, that true, that real life result from antenna modeling. Yes, you can get certain information from antenna modeling, but antenna modeling always tells you what could happen. It doesn't tell you what is happening. And that's the good thing about the reverse beacon network. It's another example, isn't it, of ham radio, how you can do some experiments in your own time, at your own speed, at your own leisure, and come up with some useful information. Ham radio is a hobby which is meant to be not only enjoyed, but also encourage you to experiment. That's how it really started. And we can't do so many experiments these days, can we? We can't dig into our radio uh, with, a, with a soldering iron, or at least I don't think I would want to these days. Um, I think you'd do more damage than, than good, but we used to in the old days. But it's the experimenting, which is a part of the hobby, which you can still continue. Antenna, antennas are a fascinating part of the hobby. We couldn't do without one. But every antenna performs slightly differently in different locations, in different gardens. And the smaller the garden, the less likely is that the antenna will perform quite as theory would suggest. So perhaps with the upcoming uh, holiday period, you might want to keep a diary and uh, do regular tests. And uh, you'll, I think you'll find it quite rewarding, quite, uh, quite interesting. So there we are, that's uh, another video um, from Waters and Stanton. Don't forget that um, we've got a wide range of equipment down at Portsmouth and we've got experienced ham radio operators there that uh, will be happy to answer any questions you've got, take your orders, advise you on what, what is uh, perhaps suitable for you and so forth. So, in the meantime, enjoy your ham radio, take care, very dif difficult times again, but keep in touch, we'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.